What are some of the most common mistakes you see in the interview and what are some of the things that you've seen that have really impressed you? I think one of the most common mistakes that I have seen are candidates who just list off things from their resume. What, pe what people want to see are examples, right? So don't just tell me that you are organized or that you can manage conflicting priorities. Give us examples, that's what we wanna see because past behavior is what's going to predict future behavior. If you're someone I've never worked with before, all I have are your stories. So make them really, really good. One method that I often talk to people about is the STAR method. You talk about the situation, the task, the action, and the result. So what we're looking for in an interview is, what did you do? What was the action that you took that you were responsible for? Really using examples to talk about the things that you are really good at. That is the greatest thing that you could do in an interview. Where I've seen people fall short, not besides just kind of lift, listing off their, their resume as if it were a recipe, is not showing an enthusiasm, right? People sometimes are a little reserved in an interview. Granted, people are nervous, but you're scared to be too enthusiastic. You're scared that it might come off as desperation or immaturity, but I think there's nothing wrong with being explicit in something that you really wanna do. Just as I was talking about students who need to compensate for their lack of experience with a strong GPA and leadership, if you are applying for a job, let's start with internally first, and you don't meet all the requirements, that's really when your network and your mentoring and all of your side projects are going to come into play. That's why it's really important to build that network, have a great relationship with your manager, with key people, and do those informational so that that team knows you. And that's really what's gonna compensate for maybe your lack of specific skill set because they've already met you and they already know that you're really interested and you're willing to work um, and you're willing to learn those skills. If you're an external candidate, you can't do that. Right. Right? You're applying, someone in recruiting is looking at your resume and you do not meet the requirements for the position. That is where that employee referral program is really going to come in handy. So if you and I used to work with each other, Gav, and you submit my resume in an employee referral process, typically there's a little comment box there and you could say, I've worked with Lauren, she's fantastic, she is such a hard worker, she ran with this project, she created these outcomes, whatever it is you write in there, and that's really what's going to fill in those missing pieces for the recruiter. Because right. Gav works here and Gav is great, so Gav must know other great people. Social proof. Exactly. If you are not part of an employee referral program, if you are not part of internal mobility and you were just applying for something where you do not meet the requirements, it's going to be difficult. You know, that, I think that's really, it's, it's great to clarify that because I think it reinforces why moving jobs internally is so powerful because you can move in a direction that you're really passionate about even though you're not qualified. The employer is willing to take a little bit of risk because you've already proven yourself capable of other things. And when you have all those things going for you, it's so much easier. That's why when, you, when you're applying externally, you've got to, you've got to take that moment to self-assess and say, okay, how am I gonna get from where I am now in front of that employer so that I can kind of show my talent, show my enthusiasm. And you've either got to use your network and try and find a way to get referred to these people, or you've got to build your skill set. You know, it's, or both. It's, it's adding qualifications, it's doing online courses, it's getting some additional experiences to bolster the resume to help you get in front of the hiring manager. And so I think it's, it's interesting when we think about it, like there's, there's many different ways you can, you can go with your career and one of the other things I always advise people is, look, if you're at point A and you want to get to point B, but you're really not qualified, maybe it's thinking about, okay, well, maybe if I can get into that industry sector, maybe if I can get into the organization that I'm really interested in, but in a slightly less senior role, you know, I take a step backwards or I take a step sideways, then you can build that internal equity and, and it gives you the opportunity to get to where you want to be. And sometimes it's just about being kind of patient enough to, to take the steps rather than jumping straight to it. Absolutely, Gavin. I can tell you in my last role, it took me a good year of networking and meeting with people until an interview opened up and I interviewed a few times and it wasn't the right role for me until I landed where I am now and very happily where I am. 
It definitely takes patience and persistence. And when you get declined for that first interview, you have to keep going, right? And you have to use that actually as a networking opportunity. And how can you continue to reach out to those people that you met with and have them sponsor you for the next role? So it, it, takes, it takes a long time. Um, so you have to be patient with yourself and persistent.